I've always said one of the biggest downsides to 3D printing is that you can't eat the things that you take off of the 3D printers. Like let's use this as an example here. It's just made out of plastic. There's no world in which I'm taking this off of the 3D printer and taking a big bite. But today, all of that changes. One sec, I, I forgot to go get it. And today, all of that changes. Cause we've got the cocoa press here inside the Unnecessary Studio. On paper, it's basically a completely regular 3D printer with one main difference. And that's that it uses actual chocolate to 3D print whatever you want to 3D print. And it comes with, uh, it comes with milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. So you load it up, print out whatever you want out of chocolate, and then you can take it off the build plate and take that big old bite. And so today I wanna to test out three things with this printer. The first one is I wanna test out the actual hardware of the printer, cause it is a little bit different than the printers I'm used to here in the studio. The next, I obviously wanna test out how well it actually 3D prints using that chocolate. And lastly, arguably the most important part, we have to find out how delicious a 3D printed object is. But the, uh, but the first order of business today, I said this printer was a a little bit different and that's because I actually have to build the entire printer and not only do I have to build the printer the cocoa press is actually built on the Voron system so I have to 3d print out a whole bunch of different parts then I use the parts that came in the box the 3d printed parts and I get to build all of that together to make the cocoa press so let's go ahead and build ourselves a chocolate 3d printer <laughs> okay, so it's been about a week since I filmed that intro, and now we officially have a chocolate 3D printer. So I wouldn't say that I hated building the Cocoa Press. I'm just so used to my bamboo print farm where you just take it out of the box and hit print. It was definitely just a different process, making sure I followed all of the steps in the like 215 page manual. And so all in all, it took me about 10 or 11 hours start to finish to build this 3D printer. And the way that I did it is I broke it up into like two or three hour chunks across four or five days so that I sort of just pecked away at all the different steps to make sure I was doing everything properly. But, uh, but all in all, I'm very impressed with the build quality so far. Okay, but enough talking. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Welcome to the Cocoa Press. The first order of business is getting the chocolate loaded up into the printer. And like I mentioned before, we have those three different options of chocolate that we can use. We've got a regular milk chocolate here. We've got a dark chocolate and we have a white chocolate. And I think I'm gonna start things off with just the classic milk chocolate here. And I think I just go ahead and slide it right into the cartridge. Oh, and another thing is that you do get two different nozzle sizes. We've got a 0.8 millimeter nozzle here, and it also comes with a 1.6 millimeter nozzle. But let's get this loaded back into the printer and secure it in place. We can go ahead and start preheating the chocolate and I'm gonna select the milk chocolate. You do have to wait 20 minutes for the chocolate to fully preheat so that it gets to the right consistency. Because I do think it gets a little bit finicky printing with the chocolate, you need to get it at the perfect temperature and consistency for your environment so that it prints just like you would expect a regular FDM plastic 3D printer to print like. But if we give this another 15 minutes to preheat, we should be good to go. For our first chocolate 3D print, I'm gonna do something that came on the SD card just so I know it's all pre-sliced, ready to go, and hopefully it comes out perfect and delicious. I'll go with this one and hit print. have a 3D printed chocolate skull sitting on the cocoa press. Let's get it off of there. I mean, I am pretty blown away by this quality. This thing is looking really good. And okay, before we actually test it out and see how good this tastes, 
I do have a confession to make. The uh, the chocolate skull that I have here is actually the dark chocolate and not the milk chocolate. And that's because the first one I made for some reason just stopped printing halfway through. So I went ahead and just reprinted it in the dark chocolate and that's where we got the full success. And that's one of my favorite things about this printer is technically this thing failed. And if it failed on one of my bamboo printers, I would just take that piece of plastic off the printers and throw it out. But on the cocoa press, you get to eat all your failures. It's still a piece of chocolate. Okay, I snapped a piece off of the skull. Let's see how good the milk chocolate tastes. I mean, that's chocolate. That's good chocolate. My hands are getting all chocolatey. But the only thing that's more fun than eating a failed print is taking that big old bite out of a full 3D printed object. And we get to do a taste test of the dark chocolate. Dun, 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 dun. Oh wow, oh well, completely apart. But it was delicious. Although this printer is still pretty new and it has a kind of small niche community base, there's already people designing things specifically for the cocoa press that is fully optimizing it for the best possible results when you're printing in chocolate. And one of those people already designing things for the cocoa press is Dave Makes Stuff. He already has this massive catalog of intricate 3D printed parts, but now he's designing things specifically for the cocoa press. So I thought we should try printing out one of his specialized files of the Eiffel Tower that you print in a spiralized manner so that it perfectly works with the chocolate. So one thing that I didn't mention before is that the Cocoa Press does have printer profiles built into Prusa Slicer, and it has it for both the 0.8 and 1.6 millimeter nozzles. And this does make things so much easier to be able to import your files, see how they look on the Cocoa Press build plate, and then get them sliced up and ready to go for the printer. The one thing you have to be careful of is checking the grams, because one of those cores is about 65 grams of chocolate. You are able to change it midway, you just gotta know that before you export it. And after you use the cocoa press for a little while, you definitely get used to all the different steps from loading in the chocolate, making sure everything is where it needs to be, getting the chocolate preheated just to the right temperature. The one nice thing is it does come with extra silicone mats, so to keep everything super sanitary, you can go ahead and swap those out. And once everything is preheated, you can start printing away. And I am still pretty blown away that you're able to get this much detail out of printing chocolate. I would have thought that it would have been way too liquid and it wouldn't cool enough to get the details. But to give you a sense of how slow it actually moves, this is what it looks like not in any sort of time lapse. Just so you can get a general idea of what it takes to go from absolutely nothing to a delicious 3D print on this printer. This model also gives you a good reference on how tall the build volume is, because this pretty much maxes out the entire build volume of the Cocoa Press. And I mean, just look at the quality of those details in the Eiffel Tower. It came out looking so good. And it's nice that it easily comes off of the build plate and it's not too much of a struggle to get it off of there. Cause I'd be a little upset if I spent an hour and a half printing this and then I just broke from me trying to take it off of the build plate. Cause it does have me thinking, who is this printer for? I mean like the most obvious one is, imagine you're a fancy French restaurant and you have this on top of a dessert. I mean, that is gonna get you some bonus points from anybody visiting your restaurant. But uh, the other thing is that it's not a 3D printer for someone's very first 3D printer. You definitely have to know the nuances of a 3D printer because, I mean, just off the bat, having to assemble it, that is so good. All of the, all of the tweaks you have to make as you're printing to kind of get used to the chocolate, get used to the environment, and all of those details. But it does get me thinking, I want a signature chocolate treat for when people come to the studio, maybe I'll 3D print a whole batch of them. So if I had my own signature chocolate bar or chocolate treat, what would it look like? Let's figure that out. <laughs> so I just started wandering around my design studio just trying to get any sort of inspiration on something I could turn into chocolate from the ridiculous things I just have laying around to my inventions themselves and everything in between. It was my neon sign of my logo that said, why don't I just turn that into chocolate? So I hopped down into my computer and opened up Fusion 360 and started envisioning what a nice piece of UI chocolate would look like. I got it loaded up into the slicer and in no time it was off onto the cocoa press, turning my idea of the unnecessary studio into a delicious piece of chocolate. And the second it was finished, I headed on over to go get that thing off of the build plate. And my only thought that I was thinking was watch out, Mr. Beast, because you're not the only YouTuber these days that has their own custom chocolate. Delicious.